most bioplastic companies in the past have failed. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, so why have companies in your space failed so much? And, and how are you thriving? How are you doing so well? How are you avoiding these problems? The, there's three lies that bioplastics companies tell themselves, tell the market, and tell their investors. And those yeah. lies are why they fail. The first lie is this. People will pay more for my plastic because it's more sustainable. Yeah. No, they will not. <laughs> this is a commodities market. Mm -hmm. The minute you're even 1% more expensive than the commodity, you've just cut 6 billion people on this planet out of using your product. Most people buy what's available, not what's sustainable, not what's most expensive. They buy what's least expensive uh -huh. or they don't have a choice. The minute you charge a green premium, you've lost most of the market. Unless you have a plan to get to commodity pricing, you're screwed. <laughs> you're not going to fix that. And you're always going to remain a niche product. And if your business model is based around going big, you're going to lose mm -hmm. and you're going to go out of business, right? The second lie that people tell themselves and their market and their investors is companies are willing to swap out their capital equipment in order to use my plastic because yeah. it's more sustainable. No, they are not. <laughs> there are $500 billion worth of capital equipment deployed in the world today just for processing plastic in its current form. Wow. You think they're going to replace half a trillion dollars just because you're slightly more sustainable? <laughs> no, absolutely not. And then the third lie is I can outscale the market. Well, I need specialized equipment to make my plastic, but nobody's willing to change their equipment, so I'm going to build it myself. <laughs> You're not going to outscale the market. Reminder, there's $500 billion worth of capital yeah. equipment that you're competing with. And oh, by the way, you already said that you're more expensive than everybody else. So how exactly mm -hmm. do you plan on, on beating the market? So in response, Applied Bioplastics has three rules. If it cannot be made less expensively than the commodity, we don't make it. If it cannot be made and used in the industry standard equipment, we don't make it. And lastly, because instead of producing, we're licensing, we're removing ourselves as the bottleneck for global adoption rather than standing in the way. Most bioplastics companies go to their, their VCs and say, hey, build me a factory and I'll be able to scale from there. No, you won't. Mm -hmm. You won't. Running a factory is hard. Like you might be a brilliant chemist, right? And who's come up with a revolutionary new plastic, but do you know how to run a factory? Probably not. And is it easy to you know hire somebody to do that when they've never seen your plastic before? No, mm -hmm. no, it isn't. Right. So you need to be either a prodigy who knows how to A, invent a new plastic and B, run a brand new factory that nobody's ever seen before and C, also know how to lead a successful business and scale it, which like how many people in the world are like that? You know what I mean? Like, I'm certainly not. So removing yourself as the bottleneck and making your technology accessible to the people who are already out there in the market and making it attractive to them by saying, hey, this is cheaper than the commodity. You can make more money on it. You must have all of those things or you are going to fail. And that's why so many bioplastics companies have failed and why I think applied bioplastics has a much higher chance for success than those others is we've, we've recognized what the market has repeatedly done wrong mm -hmm. and gone the opposite way.